Houston Zolder played host to round four of the UCI BMX Supercross World Cup Tour. The Lotto BMX track is located inside Circuit Zolder, a motor racetrack in the Limburg region of Belgium. If you win on day one or if you get eighth on day one, you have to just kind of chop it and let it go and it's a new day today because no one, I'm not gonna line up in the gate today and people aren't gonna be like, oh, he won yesterday, we'll let him go. You just gotta go out and you gotta race again. It's just a new day. Today is a little bit windy. So it's challenging for me as I don't like win at all. Uh, it's good for racing, it's good for uh, training also. So I'm just going to be motor by motor and step by step and we'll see what happens. Round three, the tour saw some great race action and it was the Olympic gold medalists, Connor Fields and Mariana Pajon who won the men's and women's final. I had a perfect day within myself. I didn't make any mistakes. I rode strong, I rode smart. I executed the plan, and for me, it feels good to do that. The new format being two days, I almost couldn't really enjoy it because 15 hours after I crossed the finish line, I'm back racing again, getting ready for the next day. I really needed this one. Physically, I'm not in money 100%. I've been injured, then I was off for six months after the Olympics. It was just like a process to learn, but I really wanted to win. With a first place in round three, Mariana Pajon now has a record-setting eight World Cup wins. I remember when I started racing Supercross, I wanted to win a World Cup, and then I waited like four years to win one. To be the, the winnest one, <laughs> I'm, I'm really proud and I want to win more, it's just the beginning. With back-to-back -back wins in Poppendal, Laura Smulders of the Netherlands leads the women's standings at 380 points ahead of Colombia's Mariana Pajon and Simone Christensen of Denmark. It was pretty hard to fall asleep last night because I was just still pretty pumped. Waking up and just want to do it yeah, the same way I was happy about yesterday. With a big win at round three, American Connor Field sits atop the rankings with 340 points with Canada's Tori Nyhog in second and Dutchman Dave Vanderberg in third. I have uh, definitely some motivation today. I'm thinking this is the last day. I get a week off when I get home. Might go on vacation, might go to the beach, so just gotta push through one more day. The track has grown from a small club track into a world-class venue, attracting both local and international riders and events. The eight meter high start hill leads into a short first straight, making lane one and the inside line a key part of the race strategy. The shorter the first straight, the more important gate position is. Whoever has the fastest lap in the previous round is gonna have the first choice in the inside lane. It becomes important at tracks with a short first straight to run quick lap times and stay on the inside of the gate. You definitely have to be on your toes going to the first turn because we're tripling and then pumping down. So if you overshoot the triple a bit, the pump can be a little tricky into the corner. So the most important thing is to get backside on that triple, get a good pump and a good drive through the corner. These turns are really tight and any move that's going to be made is going to likely have contact in them. So the best plan is to be far enough in front that no one can come anywhere near you. The second straight or pro straight sees the women take on their own set of jumps to the right while the men hit their own pumped up pro section to the left. As the riders exit the second turn, there's plenty of room to pass on the tough and technical third straight. The last turn, I think, is a little bit slippery and you have to control yourself. It's racing, like you have to close the spaces and, and try to go fast at the same time. I think the racing's gonna be close because there's not a ton of space to separate. Then it's around the last turn and a sprint to the finish line. It's a track that you need to be strong, you need to be fast. So it is kind of perfect for me. The riders first go through round one with a last chance qualifier for those who missed the cut in the first round. Heat eight of round one saw Britain's Kyle Evans take control of the lap and it looked like Alfredo Campo would get the fourth spot, but a crash in the third berm took him out of the mix. A bad gate start and a crash in the second berm forced Australia's Anthony Dean into the last chance where he qualified through in first along with Olympic silver medalist Yelly Van Gorkum in second. I was glad to be in the main again yesterday and I really felt like I had a shot at being on the podium so that was good confidence and now we can just try again. 
After the last chance round, the riders then go into single elimination. The men have to battle it through from their round of 30 seconds while the women go through from the eights. Yeah, the last round was good and we're preparing for the 1-8 now and keep that momentum going. In heat 11 of round 32, American Cole Tassar got a great start from the outside, but Carl and Nagar went too wide in the first turn, taking them both out of the running. In the round of 16s, bronze medalist Carlos Ramirez got squirrely down the start hill and crashed, bringing an end to his day. In heat 12, a huge crash at the bottom of the start hill took out more than half the field. Australia's young gun Kaisa Kakabara was knocked out of the running, but Canadian Tori Nihog used his track smarts and experience to get back on his bike to qualify through in third. Several of the top guns were eliminated in the men's round of eights, including the likes of Amadou Mir, Yeli Van Gorkum, Sean Gian, and Justin Posey. With the field now cut in half, it was time for the quarterfinals where the top four qualify through. Heat one of the women's quarterfinals saw Mariana Pajon take a lead into the first turn. Stephanie Hernandez came out strong from lane three and found herself a close second. Judy Bao kept pace on the second straight and then passed Hernandez on the inside of the second berm to work her way into second. Pajon crossed the line in first, followed by Bao and Hernandez with Dutch rider Mano Vintra grabbing the final qualifying spot. I have to have my mind like all white and, and try to control the way I go and, and just focus on me, focus on my race those spaces, but at the same time, just, just let it flow. Don't, don't push it too hard. Bethany Schriever powered herself into the lead in Heat 2 ahead of Russian rider Yaroslava Bondarenko. Schriever took the win with Bondarenko close behind in second. New Zealand's Rebecca Petch grabbed the third, while Russia's Svetlana Admakina the fourth. Heat 3 saw the ever-improving Natalia Suvorova crash out in the first straight. Denmark's Simone Christensen took control of the lap to take the win with Ruby Huseman, Andrea Escobar and Nadia Priest all qualifying through. Obviously there's a few mistakes, so I look at that. Yeah, else everything is just about being excited about it. Laura Smulders led from start to finish in the final women's corner with Brazil's Priscilla Stavo racing across from lane 6 to earn the second. Matilda Bernard and Drew Mickelson snapped up the two final qualifying spots. It's already going a bit better. I had a hard time in practice to get this gate good because it's slower than Pavendal, so you really have to relax and just stay calm, but um, yeah, we'll see. After the women's quarters, it's now time for the men to decide their own fate. In the first quarter, Connor Fields got loose on the first straight, leaving Corbin Shaw and Anthony Dean to battle it out for the lead. Fields and Graf then went wide on the berm, leaving room for Jeremy Rencurl to dive into third position on the pro straight. Shaw held on to cross the line in first, followed by Dean, Rencurl, and David Graf in the last qualifying spot. Quarter two was dominated by the French with Romain Mathieu, Sylvain André and Arthur Pollard crossing the line in the top three spots with fourth going to Kevin van Gronendal of the Netherlands. I mean, I like struggle. I won just the first two laps and I got some seconds. So I was in the lane one, which is like obviously even better here with the big hill being on the left. Dave Vanderberg charged hard from the second lane ahead of Bodie Turner in lane one to grab the early lead in the third quarter. Turner took the inside line in the first turn to grab second ahead of Tuan Van Gent, but Vanderberg was untouchable as the Dutchman took the win, followed by Turner, Van Gent, and Justin Kriegers. Nick Kimmon took the whole shot in the fourth quarter, leading the group into the first turn, trailed by Vincent Pelluard and Tori Nyhog, who crossed over from lane eight. Kimmon then built up a solid lead to take the win, followed by Pelluard, Nyhog, and Latvia's Edzus Treminis. Oh uh, yeah, one lap at a time, just trying to make it through. Yesterday, this is where my day ended already, so just trying to get a lap further and uh, we'll see from there. With the men's field now cut in half, it was time for the women's semi-finals. 
there you see the 388 of Judy Bao. I'm known for having a good gait. Last few races it was not really consistent, so hopefully this race is going to be better. The 469 bike, Stephanie Hernandez. If I come to a race and expecting something, I always hit him for the first place, for the winning place. The World Cup leader in points, Laura Smalders. We are live and direct. Semi-final heat one. A strong start in lane one in the first women's semi saw Laura Smalders take the lead into the first turn. Stephanie Hernandez and Judy Bao fought it out for second position with Hernandez taking the lead down the women's top pro straight. So it's going to be Smulders, Hernandez, Bao. Nadia Priest kept pace in fourth as the leaders staged their battle for the win. Smulders jumped into the third berm to keep the lead with Hernandez in second and Bao in third. Bao and Hernandez fighting it out for that second spot. Priest then took the last qualifying spot and headed into the women's main event. Experience shows out in this one with Smolders, Hernandez, Bow, and Priest. Semi final heat number two, elite women. And it's Mariana Pajon. Yesterday I did a really good lap, but I know I can do it much better. I just want to feel the flow through this track and just do it better than yesterday. That's it. From Denmark, Simone Christensen. If I keep being as consistent as I was yesterday on the gates, that will help a lot. It's very important to be ahead in the, in the first straight. Lined up and ready, semi number two, elite women. Colombia's Mariana Pajon used a quick gate start to pull ahead of Simone Christensen, who had the all important lane one. Pahone increased her lead on the pro straight with Bondarenko and Christensen fighting for second. Pahone just pulling away from the Russian right now. It's going to be Mariana Pahone with Bondarenko in that second position. Pahone snagged the win with Bondarenko in second, Christensen in third, and Huseman in fourth. Taking charge of that semi for the official Pahone, Bondarenko, Christensen, and Houseman. Chira, yeah. yeah. Kidman, Vandenberg, Van Gant, Dean, Renkerel, Kriegers, and Tremanis. Dutch national champion, David Vandenberg. I gotta focus more on myself, and the better you race, the better that goes. Just like, think about what you gotta do, and don't think about others. Twan Van Gant. Chira in lane one, Kim in lane two, Dave in lane three, myself in lane four, Dean in lane five. You have to come out good out of the gate, because otherwise, not gonna happen. We are locked and loaded, waiting for the call. In the first of the men's semifinals, the Dutch Army was out in full force, but former world champion Nick Kiemann had a bad start and fell back at the bottom of the hill. Anthony Dean and Edzus Tremenis locked bars and went wide in the first turn, dropping them to the back of the pack. Rob and Get and Vandenberg with Rick Carell in fourth. Shara rode his best lap of the day, the cross the line in first with Van Gent in second, Pelluard in third, and Jeremy Renkerl in the fourth. Shara, Van Gent, Vandenberg, and Rick Carell. That is the first four. Yeah. Heat number two, semifinal elite men. Corey Nyhog's going to grab some airspace right now. Definitely would love to win my first World Cup. We'll get there eventually, I think. I truly believe that, and uh, we're going to keep working for it. And next to him, number 100, Matthew. I got confidence, and I'm learning race after race, and I feel like I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Waiting for the call, Elite Men, semi number two. In the second semi, French riders Romain Mathieu and Sylvain André took control from the inside lanes. 
After losing control in turn one, Nighthawk regained his composure to ace the second straight and tuck into third on the second turn. Looks like it's the two French riders, but it's all about third and fourth position. Mathieu made it over the line in first with teammate Andre in second, Tori Nyhog in third with Graf grabbing the photo finish fourth. The official is Matthew Andre Nyhog Graf. After the action-packed semis, riders regroup before once again making their way up to the top of the start hill for their main event. There's our starting lineup, Smolders, Pahone, Bondarenko, Hernandez, Christensen, Bao, Houseman, and Peace. Judy Bao. If you are in the final, then it's just having fun. Just go for it and don't think, just go. Give everything you have. 210, Simone Christensen. Making a final and then going for the podium is like my goal for today. Would be cool to make two in a row, yeah. In lane two, Mariana Pajon. I just go up on the gate, do my best 100%, and just enjoy what I do, and that's what I do. Next to her, Laura Smalders. As the women are ready to go for the main event. In a bold move to gain the inside line from gate three, Bondarenko banged bars with Mariana Pajon as the two riders found themselves at the back of the race. Right now it's Smolders, Bao, and Hernandez. Smolders pulled ahead on the first straight to a good lead ahead of Judy Bao, who tucked in behind on the pro section, followed by Hernandez and Christensen. Bao cased the last jump coming into the third turn and crashed out as Christensen went wide to work her way into second position. Hernandez and Bondarenko battled it at the line for the third podium spot with Hernandez taking it right on the line. There's your official, Smolders, Christensen, Hernandez, Bondarenko. I knew I had to do a good gate, of course, he's in the final. He's not going to get anywhere without one. We were like so close over the first jump, it was pretty sketchy, really tight racing. I get the inside in the first corner. I was in the third place, but I make a mistake on second straight. Simon passed me, then Mariana passed me, I went in fifth place and I was no more legs. Was third down the third straight and yeah, then Judy crashed. I'm good at finding the right lines around the track and yeah, that paid off today, so I was very, very happy. I had Mariana down the first street and I knew if I just kept it clean from there, probably nobody was going to pass me, so I had a really clean lap. I'm stoked on another win. With round three winner Connor Fields now out of the running, America's only chance for a win was Corbin Chara in lane one. Number 39, Sylvan Andre. He says he's going full throttle. Big lane eight, I have fifth pick. That's him, Tori, like using the lane A yesterday. And I didn't want to be in between like those fast guys because I wasn't the fastest. Twan Van Ghent, he's won big before. Every race here, I'm struggling with the last rate. It's quite deep, and if you're jumping, it's slower. Manual and deep gaps is not the most easy part for me. Number 100, Mr. Mahieu. I'm not scared about anyone. Uh, I feel just great on every race, so that's, that's what I was looking for and I'm happy. Round number four, Elite Man, final, and we're official. Juan Van Gent stormed out of lane three and took the early lead into turn one. Jeremy Renkerl made a move on the inside, banging elbows with Andre in the turn, but Andre stood his ground and emerged in second in the pro straight. So it's Van Gent, Andre, and Renkerl Ring curl then slid out on the second berm and Shira got stuck behind the carnage. Van Ghent crossed the line in first with Sylvain Andre close behind. Juan Van Ghent, Sylvain Andre, Matthew 
That is the official results. I had to come out hot, and apparently I did. I played lane eight, had a good gate, and I just realized into the second jump I was just next to Tuan. Almost crashed myself on the first turn, slipped the two wheels. Journey came, elbowed me a little bit, but I just keep staying in the Tuan's rear wheel. The second turn is pretty tight, and there's a crash just in front of me. I just went out of the track, and when I came back, I realized that I was third. The rest of the track was okay, didn't make too many mistakes. Last jump was a little bit off, but then the finish line was in, in my inside, so I just wanted to keep it going. <laughs> the only thing I was thinking about was don't make mistakes on the last straight, especially when you're tired at the end of the race, after seven laps. You know how to ride a bike, so keep it together. To come out hot out of the gate, to lead the main, I was like, yeah, finally. That was great. Another podium was, yeah, definitely a good note. With another win here in Zolder, Laura Smulders has increased her lead in the overall standings to 530 points. With two second place finishes, Simone Christensen sits 70 points behind at 460, with Colombia's Mariana Pajon falling back to third position with 435 points. The men's race is tighter, separated by a mere 25 points. With a second place in round four, Sylvain Andrea France is back on top with 415 points. Dave Vanderberg is a close second with 395 points, while Canadian Tori Nyhog is third, only five points back of the Dutchman. Feeling, I screamed. I like, yeah, final. That was a good feeling. A really great feeling, like, because we're working, we're working really hard for it. Really happy. It's a really good feeling. I hope I can take this to Worlds um, and we'll see there. But yeah, I'm gonna work hard and see if I can get another win. I'm like super stoked making two podiums in a row. I've never done that, it's my only third podium. I won one, went eight actually once. <laughs> and then another podium, it's, yeah, it just feels great. Next up for the riders, it's the BMX World Championships held in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Just the fact that I'm gonna have the opportunity to race one at home is really cool. Whether you win it in the US or Belgium or Colombia or wherever, I mean, it's gonna be special no matter what. I wanna be really prepared for the World Championships and then it's Argentina time. The World Cup Tour then continues in South America with the riders making their way to Santiago del Estero in Argentina for stops five and six. I have a lot of time to keep working really hard and then when I come to Argentina, I just I want to do better.